Warning. The following video contains power tools, smoking, drinking, and stupid humor, all of which could be hazardous to your health. Viewer discretion is advised. And now, a wood chopping time quick tip. Hello, fellow wood chopperoos. The big chopperoo and safety Dan here. Hey. And today's episode is my top 10 woodworking tool picks. I was talking with my friend David Barton the other day, and we were thinking about how beginner woodworkers have the overwhelming task of trying to figure out what tools to first buy. Interestingly enough, David and I approach this from two different views. See, David is more a traditionalist, using all hand tools and no power. Myself, on the other hand, well, I have a mix of power tools and hand tools. So here's my top 10 first tool picks. Number one. My table saw is my favorite and most used tool. It's also one of the tools that costs the most. But I can do so much with this. If I make a few accessories, such as a table saw sled, I can make cross cuts and even miter cuts. I actually have three table saws. This one is set up with a combination blade for ripping and cross cutting. And this one is set up with my stacked dados. This way I can make dados or rabbits. And I don't have to keep changing the blades all the time, well, because I'm just lazy. Now my third table saw is actually a small contractor saw that I keep in the van when I work on job sites. Number two. The cordless drill. Now I've had this drill for many, many years and it still works great, but it is an older model now. In fact, it has the old nickel cadmium batteries, which are heavier and don't hold the charge as long as the newer ion lithiums. Now there's a lot of neat features on the new drills. In fact, this particular one has a little LED readout that tells me how charged the battery is. Number three. The impact driver. Now this might look like a tiny little drill, but it's not. It's actually very powerful. It acts like a small jackhammer that just drives in the screws. This comes in really handy when hanging cabinets. But when you use one of these, you do have to be concerned about safety. Somebody say safety? Um, yeah, I was going to mention to him that you shouldn't use an impact driver as a drill. Well, let me mention it to him. Y yeah, okay. You shouldn't use an impact driver as a drill. But here's why. If you're trying to drill with an impact driver, and you encounter too much resistance, the impact driver can actually cause the bit to shatter and it'll go flying like shrapnel. Remember, each tool has its own task. Number four. The six inch combination square. I love this tool. I can use it for everything from checking the squareness of my boards to making 45 degree angles. I can check the squareness of my blades and even use it as a height and depth gauge. Yep, and the best thing about this, it's small enough to fit in your back pocket. Number five. The folding ruler. I really like these folding rulers, especially for smaller projects. This one has a great feature, which has this expanding arm. This allows me to get accurate measurements on inside dimensions. Something that's not always easy with a regular tape measure. Number six. Chisels. Now I have a lot of chisels, but my most used three are the quarter inch, half inch, and three quarters. Now I like the Stanley 750s. They have good balance, they hold a sharp edge, and you can usually find them at a garage sale for just a few bucks. But if you want a newer chisel, but you're on a budget? Well, Irwin's do a great job. Satisfaction guaranteed. Now, no matter which chisel you get, once you learn to sharpen and hone them, you'll be amazed at the accurate details that you can achieve with these. 
Number seven. And speaking of sharp, my next pick for tools would be a hand plane. Now I love hand planes and I've got a lot of them. So narrowing it down to just one was really tough. So I narrowed it to two. The Stanley number three and a good block plane. Now I like the Stanley number three opposed to the common number four because it's lighter and easier to work with especially if I'm trying to plane in an odd position. And of course, a block plane is essential. It's great for smoothing end grain, chamfering corners, and leveling corner joints. These two planes together can do a whole lot of work for you. Number eight. The Shinto Rasp. Now this is kind of a unique looking tool because it looks like a bunch of bandsaw blades stacked together. It has coarse and fine teeth on it. I can use this to shape out a leg or to finely tune a tenon for the perfect joint. Either way, this tool has a lot to offer. Number nine. I hesitate to mention this next tool. It's the bevel. When you master this tool, it can do so much, but if you're just beginning, you may not find much use for it. There's no numbers or scales of any sort on it. However, it can create perfect angles, giving you a beautiful fitting joint. Now, most woodworkers see these and think of it as dovetail layouts, but that's only the beginning of what this tool can do. So my advice for you is to buy one and just try and find a use for it on your next project. You just might surprise yourself. In the meantime, maybe I'll create a video showing you how to master this tool. Number 10. The compound miter saw. Now this is your next tool upgrade as well as skill level. See, because that table saw, you're able to make the cross cuts and miter cuts on it. But this saw offers you one more angle, the compound angle. What that means is with the saw turned at the miter, as well as the back being tilted, you're now getting two cuts at once, creating that compound angle. This tool in conjunction with the bevel will give you some superbly fitting joints. Well, that's my top 10 tool picks for beginners. But I would like to add a few tips that I've learned from experience. Always buy the best tools that you can afford. In other words, if you have $500, don't buy a $100 saw. But at the same rate, don't go in debt. Don't spend $2,000 if you only have $500. To build up your tool arsenal, a good rule of thumb is to buy one new tool for every project you do. Now it doesn't have to be a big tool, just a small one will do. But before you know it, you'll have so many tools you'll make Home Depot jealous. Lastly, talk with other woodworkers about the tools and brands that they like. Now online reviews are great, but that particular author may not have the same skill level or interest as you. By talking with woodworkers that have similar interests, well they'll help guide you to that perfect tool. I'm really impressed, Chad. You got it down to your top 10? I could only get it down to my top 12. Yep, it was really hard to choose. In fact, I'm curious what David Barton picked for his top 10. But now you got me wondering, uh, what was your top 12? Well, I guess now it's down to my top 11. Well, if you like what you saw today, subscribe to us on YouTube. Or you can join us on Facebook. And don't forget about the blog. Well, there's one more thing that I got to do. Chad, I think it's time for you to dance. Oh, yeah. Support for this program provided by Q.
Kitty, kitty, kitty. 